Nehemiah chapter 4 tonight. We'll continue to talk about the family. The Bible says, what, the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? They said, Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be saved and your household. Let's me know that God is interested in our families. I guess probably no one is as special to us as our families. Now, we love everybody, but I got to admit something tonight, James. Now, I'm sorry. I, I probably don't love everybody much as I love my family. And I know when you hold them grandbabies, you feel the same way. It's something special about families. If there's ever been a time we need a move of God in our family, it's today. And because you love your family so much, hell hates them that much more. So we got to fight for our families. Nehemiah 4.14 says, I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the, all the people, rest of the people, be not afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord is which is great and terrible. Remember the Lord who is great and terrible. Listen now. Remember the Lord who is great and terrible. I gotta, gotta keep going right now. Remember the Lord who is great and terrible. Remember God is on your side. Remember God is fighting with you. Remember God has got your family. Remember God is gonna help you. Remember God is a present help. Remember God can do it. Somebody shout, God. It says, and so fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. And fight for your houses. I want to challenge you tonight to become warriors. To rise up and fight in the last days. For those that we love more than any. There's too much at stake not to fight. So I encourage you, fight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for the anointing of the warrior. The anointing to rise up and stir us out of complacency and passiveness. That we would fight the good fight of faith for our families. That, Lord, we would point our fingers in the face of the devil, flesh, and the world and say, no, you can't have our families. Give us the backbone and the gumption and the anointing to stand strong for our families. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouts amen. One of the greatest threats that we face in the 21st century is not a terrorist attack or global catastrophe. But the greatest threat we're facing is the attack upon our homes and upon our families. The enemy would love nothing more than to ruin our families, destroy the relationship between a husband and a wife, to separate children from their parents and put a wedge of strife between the family members. He wants to send our families to hell. That's his objective. Many homes are being destroyed today through all kinds of the enemy's attacks, through strife and lack of commitment to God and wrong priorities and even bad attitudes. If we're going to have strong, healthy relationships, you and I must dig our heels in deep and fight for our families. Nobody, listen to me, nobody can fight for your family the way you can fight. Oh, oh, come on now. I know it's good to call in for prayer requests. It's good to ask people to pray. But nobody can fight like you fight. Oh, somebody say amen. Nobody can fight for your family the way you can fight. It's a fight. Somebody shout, it's a fight. There's so much at stake. The destiny of eternal souls depend on how you fight. The Old Testament records a time when Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. The walls had been torn down and set on fire, and the enemy was coming against God's people, against the homes and the families. The situation got so bad that Nehemiah, while he was trying to rebuild the walls, instructed his men to take a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other. 
Because the truth of the matter is, sometimes you've got to build a while, and sometimes you've got to fight a while. Can I get a witness out there? You go along building and building and building, and all of a sudden something will show up, and you've got to drop your hammer and pull your sword and say, devil, get out of my life. Get out of my family. Hallelujah. He commanded them. This was a command from Nehemiah. He said, fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives and your family. Somebody shall fight. This is a challenge tonight to rally to war. It's time to fight. Nehemiah 4.14, he says something very powerful. He said, if you will fight. Oh, I like this. He said, if you will fight. Now, you may not think you're able or you're strong enough. But he said, if you will fight, God will fight with you. God is waiting for somebody to do something so he can get behind the something and, and win your families. Your willingness to fight releases God's power and God's help in your life. Now, there has always been attacks on the family from the beginning of time. From Cain killing Abel, Jacob's son selling Joseph into slavery and lying about it. Abraham sleeping with his handmaiden. David's own son, Abnon, raping his sister. Absalom killing his own brother. On and on and on. Absalom is killed by Joab as he shot, fiery, shot darts into him. And David cried out, my son, my son, my son. His heart was broken. There has been broken hearts over families for the generation of time. Satan hates families. But there's something different in today's society. Throughout the ages of time, people have fought for their families. I come out of a fighting generation. I'm birthed out of a fighting generation. I'd been in hell if somebody hadn't a fault for me. I'm talking about people that knew how to pray, knew how to war in the spirit, and knew how to push the plate back, and they claim my soul. I want to. I'm preaching the gospel tonight. I'm a product. Somebody fought for me and won the bad battle. Hallelujah. There's something going on today. The attitude of today's generation is an attitude of passiveness instead of tenacity. Back then, years ago, people did everything that was necessary to demonstrate they loved their family. And although hell hit the family with everything it had, they prayed, they, they sought God, they fought the devil, they prayed until the demons of hell's chains were broke off their family. And listen, let me go ahead and say this now before you get upset with me, Facebook. Listen now. Church was the place we came to fight. I'm telling you, if it had not been for the church years ago, when lives were broken and marriages were broken into, and children were out doing crazy things, thank God for the church. We could march down to the altar and believers would rush in with us and we'd pray hell off our families. Hallelujah. We got to get back to that. Somebody said we got to get back to that. Amen. So, so uh, uh, many a marriage was headed for divorce years ago. Some of you in this church, y'all were headed for divorce. I was there. Your marriage was just about over. And I said, give God a chance. And you came to church and you got in these altars and your marriage is better than it ever was. I, can talk, I could name some of them in here tonight. And then there's some, some of your children that have went wayward and went crazy and did wild things and drove you just about crazy. You thought, my God, pastor, I'm going to die if they don't get saved. And they get, went out there and did crazy. But we prayed. <coughs> and the church rallied. And we had all night prayer meetings. Anybody remember those? And we pushed the plate back three days at a time. And we said, devil, you're not going to have my family. And we fought the good fight of faith. And we kept fighting until that child came in and came to the altar and received Jesus Christ. They got kids today and they're raising them up in church because you and I fought for them. Somebody shout praise God. The thing is this. I want you to get this. Get this. If you fight, you will win. The only way you can lose is not fight. The only way you can lose is forfeit by not fighting. Because the Bible says if you fight, oh, I like this. God gets involved in my fight. Oh, I like that, don't you? I'm glad I don't have to fight by myself. Amen. God gets in it with me. He fights with me and for me and for my family. There have been many families that have been put back together because at the altars of God, we fought for them. I want to tell you today, and probably some of you, I'd be in hell tonight had my mama not fought around an altar somewhere. 
I can remember growing up as a kid, mom knew how to fight in the altars. Paul Manning, I want to tell you, you'd be in hell tonight if it hadn't been for your parents fighting in that altar. Some of you, Spencer, you'd be in hell tonight. You know it. Somebody fall. And, and I'm telling this is what I'm trying to tell you. We need to reach back and touch some of those dead bones. Like Elisha's dead bones. When the, when the dead man touched the dead bones, he got up and lived. We need to touch these truths that were working. We, we thought they were old-fashioned. They thought we thought they were too strict. They thought we thought they were fanatical. But I'm telling you, power in prayer work. And I'm here today to say, look what the Lord has done through prayer. The problem with this generation, we've lost our violent spirit. What does it take to make you mad? Somebody get in your parking place. Somebody sit in your pew. And somebody called me one time and said, somebody sit in my pew Sunday. I said, you better get off this telephone. I ain't got no time for this mess. You better get off this telephone. I mean, we get mad over stupid stuff while our kids are dying and going to hell. We ought to be violent. Say, devil, let me tell you something. I'm going to worship in church tonight and magnify the Lord because I'm mad at the devil. And I know when I worship, God comes in. The Bible says God inhabits the praise of the field. So don't get in my way. I'm going to worship God. I'm not going to be dry and dead and sleep. I'm going to worship Almighty God and fight the good fight of faith. I'm mad. If I got to shout by myself, I'm going to shout. If I got to dance by myself, I'm going to dance. Amen. Telling somebody before church about running, I said, when, when people say run, I'm gonna say, Did you see me? I'm back. <laughs> but I believe God is still looking for some old time Holy Ghost worship in His church with violent spirits to say, Devil, we're tired of you picking on our families. We're tired of you picking on our children. Take your filthy hands off of our family in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Amen. Let me hear your war cry out there. Hallelujah. We have lost our warrior spirit. Amen. You know, in the natural, if you were to pick on my family, you had to pick on me. Now, our brother outweighed me probably 100 pounds, big guy. I mean, all man. But if somebody messes with him, they got to mess with me. If somebody messes with me, they got to mess with me. Believe well, I'm telling you, devil, you mess with my wife or you mess with my family, you messing with me. And I, I, I want to tell you, I'm not going to let you have my family. And that's the attitude we got to take. We love our families. We're going to war, with, uh, war for our families and, and be willing to fight when necessary. We've lost in this generation our boldness. We've gotten too timid and too, too uh, uh, weakly and, and too letting the devil run over. You need to rise up and say, listen, devil, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm not putting up with this. Get out and get out now. Somebody shout at me. When's the last time you said, devil, get out and get out now. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my children. Get out of my home. Get out and get out now. We've lost our courage to walk down in the valley and face the giants. And we have forfeited our families to the devil himself. Come on now. And so in 1 Kings 20, there is a spirit that's loosed. I call it the spirit of Ahab. And this is the spirit that is alive today. And and the king of Syria, a type of the devil, sent word to the king of Ahab. He's a symbolic of the devil. He said, your silver and your gold is mine. I'm going to take it. Your wives, your children, your family, your home, it's mine. I'm going to take it. I'm going to possess it. Can't you see the devil doing that? Now, that should be a reason for somebody to say, wait a minute. Mm -mm. You're not going to take it without a fight. I didn't say you wouldn't take it. You're going to have to kill kill me first. But that's not what he said. He said, O Lord, O King, according to your sayings, I am yours and all I have is yours. So he had rather lose everything he loved, then fight. You say, Pastor, he speaks as a crazy man. But that's what we're doing. I'm going to show you right now. You ready? 
We'd rather lose our families than grab hold of the horns of the altar and pray. Mine's getting quiet. We'd rather lose our families than show up on Monday night prayer meeting. Well, I'm meddling, ain't I? We'd rather lose our families than push that plate back for three days. We'd rather lose our families than get up every morning and read our Bible and cry out to God. Listen, this is a battle. This is warfare. You can't sit back and relax and do nothing and get your family saved. you got to rise up and say, you know something? The devil's not going to help my kids. The devil's not going to help my family. I'm going to fight. Is anybody willing to fight? Now, you, now, now, I believe that God is challenging us to change. We can't keep acting the same way we act. We can't keep doing the same. we got to rise up. we got to walk the floors of our home and say, devil, I drive you out. Devil, take your hands off of them in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not be submissive. You're not going to have my family. That's what God is saying we need to do. Amen. And so, you know, we'd rather surrender than, than come to prayer meeting or come to camp meeting or come a couple of services on Sunday, Sunday morning. You know, right now, we're satisfied with one hour a week in church. We breeze in here about 9.30. We're looking at our watch at 10.30. Praise God, we got a short-winded preacher. Boosh! Wouldn't hurt some of you, some of us, to stay till 11 o'clock, to 12 o'clock, to say, you know something, the devil's attacking the church. The 11 o'clock service is, is, is weak. I'm going to make it strong. Yep. Uh oh, now it's getting quiet in here. I, I, I can spend two hours in church on Sunday. Somebody say, I'm willing to fight. I'm fighting the devil every which way. I, I've got to have the anointing of God. If i got to come 930 and stay to 12, that ain't no big deal. Hallelujah. Does anybody remember we used to go uh, 10 o'clock Sunday school, 11 o'clock morning worship, and most preachers preached about 1 o'clock. Am I preaching to anybody? You got it good around here. You got, I'm telling you how good you got it. You got it so good that preachers, when they call me to want to preach here, they know I don't put up with long-winded preachers. Now, I want God to have his way, but I don't want flesh to have its way. I look after you. Amen. Amen. So, so you know, the spirit of Ahab has rested on this generation. I don't need a whole lot. I don't have a burden for the church or for the services or for growth. And, 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 and so it's all right, but we're, we're, we're facing hell. We sit back and half our marriages are winding up in divorce. Our kids are getting hooked up on drugs and alcohol and pornography. We're celebrating our daughters getting pregnant without being married. We've, we've been overtaken by the Ahab spirit. The Ahab spirit surrounds us and says, surrender your fight. Go along to get along. And here's the lie. The first lie the devil ever told is the same lie he tells today. You will not surely die. Your family will not surely die. Everything will be all right. But that's a lie of the devil. The Ahab spirit has no willingness to fight. But here's tonight as I'm closing. I want you to be anointed with the David spirit. Amen? David is willing to fight if no one else will. He walked down in that valley all by himself. Sometimes you've got to rise up as a husband, as a wife, as a parent, and say, I don't care who, whose family's doing what, my family is going to serve God. Amen. And, and we're coming to church, and we're going to pray, and we're going to seek God. The, the David spirit has confidence in the name of the Lord. We come in the name of the Lord. The David spirit will confront any battle or any giant and not run from it. The David spirit is not a, afraid of the enemy because he knows greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And the David spirit is willing to take on the challenge. Now, that's where we're at tonight. My quest tonight is to ask you, are you willing to take on the battle? We just said at the beginning of this sermon that the most precious thing in our lives is family. Are you willing to fight for them? Amen? 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 
Then Nehemiah said this as I close. He said, uh, you got to build a while, got to battle a while. But if you build only, you're not going to be able to build because the devil's going to come and attack you. If you battle only, you'll never build anything. You got to build a while and battle a while. And here's some things we need to rebuild. Number one, we need to rebuild family altars, pray together, read our Bibles together. I, I, I would like to take a, 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 a list sometimes of the number of people in the church that still have a family altar, that still sit down with their children and read Scripture. I'm not talking about the little babies and reading little Bible stories. We, we do that. I'm talking about before we go to bed, say it's time to read a Scripture and to have a word of prayer. Rebuild broken relationships. We don't talk anymore. We don't sit down anymore and, and, and tell one another that we love one another. We, we're on our phone the whole time, and we're not taking time to say, let's spend some time with one another. We need to rebe rebuild a strong church commitment. I, I'm sorry if you don't like this. I'm churchy. I still believe the church is necessary. I still believe that. Raise some standards up in our homes. Don't let just any and everything go up. Rebuild the walls of doing what's right and the walls of commitment and, and the walls of teaching our children by example. And here's, here it is as I close. Nehemiah said, fight. If you fight, God will fight. So it lets us know if you don't fight, then God won't fight. The most precious thing in our lives we're not fighting for.